In this video, we're going to look at how we can determine the order of a particular reaction or the order of a reactant using graphical means, specifically using a graphing calculator. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to do the best I can to try to describe what's going on here, um, being limited by the fact that um, I don't have, I'm not standing in front of you with a calculator and being able to show you that as we go, but we'll do the best we can. First of all, um, one thing you can do with a graph is to determine what the rate is at any given time. For instance, this is a picture of what's happening to products during the reaction and what's happening to reactants during the reaction. Because products are always appearing, reactants are always disappearing as the reaction proceeds. We can draw a line tangent to the curve at any given time. If we have a, 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 a graph of concentration versus time, we can take any specific time that we want to, and we can take that curve draw that line tangent to the curve, and the slope of that line tangent to the curve at time t is equal to the rate of the reaction. That's an important phrase to remember because they've often asked this, uh, um, asked us to give them this information on, for instance, a free response on the AP test. We need to know that if we draw a line tangent to the curve at time t, that's going to be the rate at that specific time. When we try to determine by graphical means the order of a reactant, this table is something that you're going to be able to use to come up with information that you need in order to solve these problems. Um, if we have, we've already discussed that if you have a zero order, first order, or second order reaction, that these are the exponents you're going to get in a differential rate law. Now, we're going to look at what the graph of each of these we'll look at in just a moment. So I'm just going to leave this next set of pieces of information alone for now um, because this will be, um, we'll explain this better in just a moment. Now, as far as a relationship of k to slope, all you need to do is to graph a straight line. And depending on what order the reaction is, you're going to have to graph something different to get a straight line. But once you get that straight line, all you need to do is take the absolute value of the slope, and that's going to give you your value for k. You're going to have to come up with the units for k using the shortcut that I talked to you about before in a previous video, but you'll be able to get the numerical value for the slope that way. The integrated rate law is going to be the equation that can be used to determine anything dealing with time. Once we put time into the equation, if you will, we're going to need to use the integrated rate law to figure anything out. The half-life, we also have a half-life equation for each of these different orders of reactants. So one of them should be very familiar to you. This one right here, half-life is equal to 0.693 over k. That's our half-life for a decay reaction. And a decay reaction is a first-order reaction. So that's why we get um, that's why we're seeing this equation again. I wanted to do the nuclear chemistry first, just to show you where the, these equations were applicable. Now, this one may not look as familiar as it did in nuclear because it's written a little bit different, a little bit different way. If you'll remember in nuclear chemistry, we wrote it as ln of A over A0 equals negative KT. But natural log rules you'll get the same answer if you split that up and say ln of a minus ln of a0 is equal to negative kt. You'll get the same answer. That's just the rule of logs. This just happens to be 
what they recently changed the um, integrated rate law equations to look like on the AP test. So that's why I am giving to you them to you in that form. So. Okay, so this is going to be your source. You're going to get this table whenever you take the test. There are going to be some of these pieces of information that will not be here. You're going to have to come up with this part right here on the test. If you know it's zero order, you're going to have to come up with what the differential rate law would be, what you would plot for a straight line, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then what you would do to get the k value, simply find the slope of the straight line for every single one of them and take the absolute value. Now this is what a graph, a straight line graph for a zero order reaction would look like and all you have to do for a zero order reaction is graph concentration versus time and it will give you a straight line. When you see concentration versus time as a straight line, you know it's a zero order for that reactant. And if you'll notice, in a zero order reaction, one of the things that you can see is that as we go through half-life periods or go through situations, every time we half the amount of the substance that we have left, the half-life gets shorter. So in a um, zero order graph, it's going to be easy to tell it's, if it's zero order, even if it's not labeled, because the half-life keeps getting shorter. As we go from 0.2 down to 0.1, we have a half-life of this much, okay, a little bit less than 30. As we go and half again from 0.1 to 0.05, the half-life is shorter somewhere in the lot, like the 30, a little over 30, uh, excuse me, not quite right. Um, let's see, it would be right at a little over 15, okay? And then when we look at it again over here, we see that the half-life actually keeps halving on us. So um, that's going to be your clue that you're dealing with a zero-order reaction. Now, a first-order reaction if you graph concentration versus time, molarity versus time, this one's going to be very, very nice curve. It looks like a perfect curve, part of a circle. And you'll notice that the half-lives, as you drop from 0.2 to 0.1, the half-life is um, staying is 7. And as you drop from 0.1 to 0.05, the half-life is still 7. As you drop from 0.5 to 0.025, or oh, yeah, 0.025, then your half-life is going to still be 7. The half-life never changes. That's your first order reaction. That's your decay reaction for a nuclear um, isotope. So the half-life stays the same. It's a beautiful, nice curve. Now, for a second order reaction, you can see that this is not going to be a perfect circle. It's going to end up looking something like an oval if we were to complete this whole curve and make it into one, sing, uh, one continuous line. We would end up with something that looks, looks more like an oval. That was pretty pathetic, but I think you get the idea of what I'm talking about. Now, notice what's happening here in a second order reaction. Look what's happened to half life. First order was getting smaller, second order stayed this, or excuse me, zero order was getting smaller, first order was staying the same for half life. In this case, we get a bigger and bigger half life every time. So we can recognize by graphing molarity versus time, concentration versus time, just by looking at what the graph looks like, we can tell whether we're dealing with a zero first or second order reaction. Using your graphing calculator, you are going to be able to uh, determine the order of a reactant simply by putting in information into the calculator and then asking it to graph and analyze that information. So while you're doing this, you're going to want to have a ca graphing calculator handy. Now, I prefer the TI 83 Plus. It's it's the calculator of choice for chemistry. It's the easiest you, to use for these applications. TI 83 will work. TI 84, 84 Plus. Um, I know the 89 is awful. The 89, I can't. I'm sure it will work, but I can't figure it out. So. Um, 
you'll be much better off to use one of my calculators in class if you don't have one. The first thing you're going to want to do is to get your calculators set up to show something called the regression coefficient or R. This is a value that you calculate that will help tell you if your line is straight or not. We'll talk about it more in a moment. The graphing calculators don't automatically do this, so you have to do it on your calculator. You only need to do it once. Once it's done, it's always done. You're going to hit this second and then zero. You're going to arrow down to diagnostics on and hit enter twice. So if you do that, it will automatically start showing your R value, your regression coefficient. Another thing that you need to remember is that whereas slope in math is represented by M, slope on TI calculators for whatever reason is represented by A. So instead of y equals mx plus b, the equation you come up with is y equals ax plus b. That's important because on all of these, we're going to need to get the slope because remember, we're going to be able to calculate k if we know the absolute value of the slope. The second thing you need to do is to clear all of your lists, which is going to tell you what your calculator what to graph. So you're going to hit the second button, the plus symbol, and then just hit four. It says clear all lists, but it's number four, so it's easier just to hit second plus and then hit um, four. You'll do this every single time you start a new problem. So this is not a one time only. This is an every single time you start a new problem. So a typical example would be this. For this particular reaction, the following data were obtained experimentally, and the time, it has the time going from 0 to 30 to 60 to 90, and then it gives you the, the concentrations of this species at each of those times. And what it's going to ask us to do is to determine the order of the reaction with respect to the CH33CBR. It's going to ask us to give them the rate constant, and it's going to ask for the differential rate law. So we're going to find all of these things. Now, how do we do that? What's the procedure? The first thing that you're going to do is to hit STAT on your calculator. Now, I'm going to be flipping back and forth here, and I'm going to do the best I can. So you'll, you may have to be patient because I've never tried to do this before. But the STAT button is right here. You're going to hit STAT, and then information is going to come up on the screen of the calculator. And the very, it's, it's already on edit, so all you'll have to do is hit enter because you're already going to be highlighted on edit. So you'll hit enter. When you do, whoa, didn't mean to do that. When you do, it's going to come up with a set of lists. And you're going to enter the information into these lists. And that's what I did here. So if you enter the information from the table on the previous page, then it's going to look like this. So please do that really quickly. If you don't do this as we're going through these notes, this is not going to make sense. So put those values in. The next thing that you're going to do, and hopefully you're pausing this every time and giving yourself time to put these values in. Before I tell you, to, before we do this, I'm going to go back here and just Go back to this table really quick and mention one, go back and talk about these plots. We've already seen now that we looked at the graphs that if we have a zero order, all you have to do is, is graph concentration versus time and you'll get a straight line. On the other hand, if it's a first order reactant, to get a straight line, you have to graph the natural log of A versus time. This is something you're going to have to memorize. You might as well start trying to memorize it now. If it's first order, you'll get a straight line if it's natural log of, of the concentration versus time. If it's second order, you'll know it's second order if your best straight line is the reciprocal of the concentration versus time, one over the concentration versus time. So every time we do a problem, we're going to have to do three graphs, determine which one of those graphs is the best straight line, and that's going to tell us what our rate order is. And that's what I'm going to spend the rest of this discussion showing you how to do. So let's go back to our graphing calculator. 
once we've put in L1, which is always going to be time, and L2, which is our concentration of the substance. I'm not going to write CH3, 3 CBR every time. I'm just going to call it A. So once I put that into L2, the next thing I want to do is to put natural log of the concentration in L3. Now, how do I do that? I could calculate every single one of them. I could put natural log of 0.1, natural log of 0.074, etc. into my calculator and get those values and then plug them in. But there's a much, much quicker way to do that. If in your calculator you'll arrow over until it highlights the tippy tippy top, <laughs> so many times I heard that from AP people when they were teaching us, and these are people that go around the nation teaching this, going go to the tippy tippy top. So that's what I'm going to tell you, go to the tippy tippy top of L3 so that L3 is highlighted, and down here at the bottom you're actually going to type in LN of L2. Now. How do you do that? There is an LN button right here on your graphing calculator. And if you'll notice, the second function of the number 2 is your L2 button. Now, it doesn't show up really great on this picture, but on your calculator, you should be able to see it really well. So you're going to push LN, then you're going to push second L2. And when you do that, it is going to automatically populate L3 with all of those natural log values right here. So if you did this right, these are the values that you should see in your L3 column. Just a really cool way to do this more quickly. And now in L4, our final column, we're going to go to the tippy tippy top of L4 so that L4 is highlighted. And then down at the bottom, we're going to type in L2 to the negative 1. Now, how do we do that? Let's go back up to the calculator. And we've already established that second 2 is our L2 button. So we're going to put that in. And then we're simply going to hit the reciprocal button, x to the negative 1. So you're going to push the second L2. And you're going to push the x to the negative 1. And when you hit enter, it should populate your L4 column with all of the correct values. So these values should show up as soon as you hit the enter after you've told L4 what you want it to be. So now you've got all of your lists populated. You've got all of your data tables, if you will, with the values in it. And now what we're going to do is come up with three different graphs. We're going to graph the three things from that table. We're going to end up graphing L1, L2, which is our time and concentration. We're going to graph L1 and L3, which is our time and natural log. And we're going to graph L1 and L4, which is our time and our reciprocal of our concentration. So those are the three graphs that we want to graph. So how are we going to do that? We're going to hit, well, let me go back to here first. We're going to hit stat. And this time, the very next thing over is the calc value and we're going to hit calc because that's what what that's going to let us do is to analyze the information that we have in our data tables. Once we hit that, we're going to arrow down to linreg which is number 4. So we're going to hit stat calc and hit number 4 which is linear regression. And we're going to tell it that we want it to graph L1, L4. So for the first time that you do it, it should come up with L1 and L, did I say L4? I meant L2. L1 and L2 already plugged in. 
So all you have to do is hit, I believe it's calculate or hit enter. And if you do this correctly, you should come up with a screen that looks like this. This is your L1 comma L2 screen. And the values that are important to us on this screen are A and R. Those are the values that you want to write down or jot down somewhere that you found for L1 and L2. The easiest way to get back to, I mean, you can go through stat calc again and change L2 to L3, but the easiest way to do this is to hit the second enter second and then hit the enter button it's going to go back to the screen that you just solved and it's going to have l1 comma l2 and all you're going to do is arrow back one so that it's highlighting l2 excuse me yeah highlighting l2 and you're simply going to change that to l3 and second number three is where your l3 button is so arrow back and hit second three which is your L3 button and it's going to tell your calculator to graph L1 comma L3 and if you do that correctly you should come up with this screen and again you need this value and this value those are the two important values that you need finally we need one final graph we need the graph that's going to let us graph L1 and L4 which is our time and our reciprocal concentration so if you hit second enter again and you arrow back so that you're highlighting L3 change it to L4 which is oddly enough the second function of the number four and hit enter you should end up with a screen with the important values again being A and R. What we want to see on these three screens, if I can get these to where they'll show, what we're looking for on those three screens is an R value closest to one. The R value closest to one is going to be the best straight line. If you'll notice the top one, the R value is 0.99. It's pretty darn close to one, but then it shoots down to 07. The bottom graph starts with 0.99, it shoots down to 212. However, let's look at this one. This one is 0.99998. That is our value closest to one. What does that mean? It means that when we graph the natural log, time versus nat the natural log of the concentration, we get a straight line. Okay, what does that mean? Pardon me while we arrow back. If time versus concentration is our straight line, look what that means right here that tells us that we have a first order reactant so we're able now to answer part of this question it asks us to find the order of the reaction with respect to ch33 cbr and we just found out that rate was equal to k remember that's always in there times the concentration of CH3, three, I'll go ahead and write the actual substance in here now instead of A, CH3, three, CBR, and we decided it was first order. So we can either put a one up there or just understood one, and that's our differential rate law. It is first order with respect to that probably should have answered that first but with respect to CH3 3CBR
And now we need the value for the rate constant. How do we find the rate constant again? Absolute value of the slope. So when we go back here and we look at our analysis of our um, concentration of A versus time, then we see that the slope is negative 0 0.009905. So we always want absolute value. So it looks like k is going to be, our k, our decay constant is going to be 0 0.0099, probably 991. I'll go ahead and put 9905. And since this is first order over all, first order over all gives us what units, remember it's one less, so that's zero, that means our liters and our moles have zero for an exponent if we're using our shortcut for units, so they're not even going to show up, we'll end up with seconds to the negative one for our unit. There's our k value. Okay, and going back here. Um, We found the differential rate law, and let's say that it asks us for the integrated rate law. So we're sitting there going, integrated rate law, what in the heck does it mean by that? Well, the integrated rate law is given on our table. All we have to do is look at our first order, and we see that the integrated rate law, anytime it asks us about time, our integrated rate law is going to be ln of a minus ln of a zero equals negative kt. So going back to our problem, the extension to that problem then, down at the bottom, said for the previous reaction, determine the half-life, and in addition, determine the integrated rate law for the reaction and the concentration of CH33CBR after 105 seconds. Well, as soon as it wants half-life, we go back to that table, and it should be familiar to you, half-life is going to be 0.693 over K, we just figured out what k was, 0 0.693 over 0 0.0099, I'll go ahead and put 1, I think that's better for sig fig, 0 0.00991 reciprocal seconds. So it looks like our half-life for this substance, this particular reactant, is 70.0 seconds. There's our half-life. It also wants to know how much of, uh, or what the concentration is going to be after 105 seconds. As soon as it involves time, we know we're using the integrated rate law. And let's go ahead and solve it using the equation that they're going to give us on the test. ln of A over A0 equals negative KT. And for our specific purposes, we need the concentration of CH3, 3 CBR, minus the natural log of CH3, 3 CBR, 0, and that's going to equal negative KT. Now, we don't know what the concentration now, remember zero is what it originally was. We don't know the concentration of this now. But we do know the concentration of it originally. Remember, it's back up here in our data table. Right here, the concentration originally at time zero People are always telling me they can't find the original value, but the original value is in the data table. It's 0 0.100. And that's going to equal our K value, negative 0 0.0991. 
reciprocal seconds times our time of 105 seconds. When Remember what we're going to do is to find the natural log of this value, okay? And then we'll simply add it to the other side. It's subtracted on this side. We'll get a numerical value. We'll simply add it to the other side after we have multiplied out this term. We'll add that to the other side. And what we'll end up with is an unknown natural log value equal to a number. Remember what we do for that? We use our inverse natural log or our e to the x button. It's the second ln function, but we'll use inverse natural log of both sides to get that value. So I pause that for just a second because I felt like something was wrong, and it was. This is supposed to be 0 0.009915, so that makes a difference. So let's see how these values come into play. We've got ln of our CH33 CBR minus, and when we get the ln of the natural log of 0.1, we end up with a negative 2.30. And that's going to equal a negative 1.04055 once we multiply those two together. So now, this of course, if we're subtracting a negative, that's actually like adding. So I'm going to subtract the 2.30 from both sides. And what I get is that the ln of this substance, I sure wish I'd picked a shorter substance to write, is going to be equal to negative 3.34055. And as I said earlier, when I was trying to describe and, and walk you through a little bit how to solve this, the way to solve for an unknown natural log is to take e to the x of both sides inverse natural log of this side, inverse natural log of this side, it cancels over here. So what we end up with is that our concentration for CBR, CH33 CBR, after 105 seconds, we're going to take e to the x of negative 3.34055, and we get 0 0.035 molar for our concentration. So that's our graphical analysis of rate law.